hello welcome to ss unitex sushil this side and this is continuation of azure databricks tutorial so today we are going to start with the mount point inside the file system utility so before going forward if you haven't watched the last video of this video series so i would strongly recommend to watch that video so why we are required to create the mount point and what is the mount point all these we will see in this video Remember, we have discussed about the DBFS, so which is the Databricks file system. So Databricks file system is the internal storage for the Databricks. And it is available inside the Databricks workspace and Databricks clusters. It's available internally, so we are not required to create any additional connection string for accessing the files. Those are available inside the DBFS. Let's assume if the file is available outside the DBFS, that could be your Azure Blob Storage or ADLS Gen 1 or Gen 2. Then we are required to create one additional connection that is called mount point inside the Databricks. So here we will be creating connections by using the Azure Blob Storage. So here the first thing that we need to notice like the mount point can be created either using the account key or SAS token. So like by using these two options, we can create the mount point. So in this video, we will be covering both. So first we will see how we can create by using the account key. Second, we'll see by using the SAS token. So here, as we can see in the first one, we are having command that is dbutils.fs.mount. So this command will be used for creating the mount point. And it is asking three required input parameters. The first one is the source. Second is the mount point name. And third is the extra configuration. So the first one, which is the source, as we can see, it is having the container name. First, we have to supply and after that, the storage account name everything remains same as we can see here next here we have to supply the mount point name so that will be your mount point name next we can see inside the extra configuration so everything remains same and here we need to add the storage account name and last we have to supply the account key so this is the changes are required in this syntax so first is the container name second is the storage account name third is the mount point fourth again for the storage account name and fifth for the account key so how we can get all these values let's quickly go inside the browser and we'll see before going inside the azure databricks we are inside the blob storage so i have created this storage account with the name of ss unitech and inside this we are having two containers one is the input container and second is the output container so you have to remember one thing while we are going to create the mount points it will be created on the container level it cannot be created on the storage account level so let's assume if we are having 100 containers under any storage account then you have to create 100 mount point for accessing all those so here we will be creating two mount points one for the input and second for the output so for the input we will be using access key and for the output we will be using sas token so inside the input we, we can see we are having two files one is the employee file and second is the sales file so first we will try to create the mount point and then we'll try to access these files so let me quickly go inside the azure databricks and in this workspace as i have already created the notebook and inside this notebook as we can see this cluster up and running so before going to create the mount point first try to see the description about the mount so let me quickly use the dbutils dot fs dot help so inside this we can see all those commands those are available we can see this mount so under the mount we have mount then we can see the mounts refresh mounts unmount update mount so all these commands are available let me quickly see for the mount because in this video we are more focused for learning about the mount so we can execute so let me quickly scroll down and you can read all these if it's not very clear here we can see it is asking for the source 
that we have seen in the slide next it is asking about the mount point so mount point we can supply and after that we can see all these values so we can skip because this is not required here we can see the extra configurations so we can supply this extra configurations that we will see so i have already written the syntax for creating the mount point so let me try to copy it and after that let me try to paste it here now we need to make the necessary changes on this so as we can see the first change for the container name so we can go here and we can see the container name so the container name is the input as we can see so we can click and this is the container by which we want to create the mount point so we can replace this container name as input and after that it is asking about the storage account name so storage account name is the ss unit tech that you can see we can replace this storage account name by ss unit tech remain everything will same for the source next we can see the mount point so it is asking mount point name so i am going to supply mount point name as an input because we are going to create the mount point for the input location and after that here we can see it is asking about the storage account name remember the storage account name is the ss unit tech so we can replace this storage account name by using ss unit tech and at the last we have to replace this account key so how we can get the account key we can simply go here and on the storage account level don't go inside the container level on the storage account level you can scroll down and you can go on the access keys and inside the access key you will see key 1 and key 2 so either you can go with the key 1 or key 2 so let me go with the key 1 let me copy this so it's copied and let me paste it here after pasting let me try to execute this so once it will be executed we should be able to create the mount point and we can access the files those are available inside the input container so as we can see true so your mount point should be created so how we can check that so let me go and try to use the db utils dot fs dot ls so ls for the list of all the files so let me go and try to use mount of the input so here we should be able to see two files so let me use the display command so the output will be in tabular format so that will be easy to understand so here we can see two files one is the employee files and second is the sales file next we want to create one more mount point for the output by using the sas token so let me quickly go here and use the same whatever we have written for the account key so this time we want to use for the output so let me use the output as an container name here and source will remain same there is no any change in the source in the mount point name instead of input i am going to call this as output we have to modify little bit inside the extra configuration so inside the extra configuration so here we can see the account key so instead of account key we have to use the sas and after that your container name so like these two changes you have to make first you have to replace account key by sas and then you have to supply the container name remains everything will be same now here we have to specify the sas token so how you can get the sas token again you can go inside the blob storage and here inside the storage account level again you have to remember you don't go inside the container inside the storage account level you can go and you can search for the shared access signature here allowed resource type you can select all these three you can scroll down you can set up what will be the expiry of this token so i am going to leave as it is because i am going to create this for the testing here we can see the sas token so we can copy the sas token and we can go back to here and paste that sas token and we'll try to execute it so it should be executed successfully and your mount point will be created and the mount point name will be 
output so as we can see output as in true so it means your mount point is created successfully so let me quickly go and try to check that by using dbutils.fs.ls and inside that we can check for the mount and after that output we try to execute so as of now we don't have any file under this so that's why we can see the blank but we are successfully able to execute this query so we have created two mount point one by using the account key second by using the access token so i'll be going to provide these two queries inside the description of this video so you can utilize now we want to copy the file from the input location to the output location so let me quickly go inside the container and here let me go inside the input and inside the input we have employee so let me try to copy this employee file from here to the output so let me quickly go here and for copying the file from one location to another location we can use dbutils.fs.cp so we have seen in the last video about this here we have to supply the source so as we can see the source let me quickly go here so this is the path so we can copy this path and let me quickly go in the downside and here we can paste that so from this input location of the employee file we should be going to copy into the output location simply we can execute it so once it will be executed your file should be copied as we can see true let me quickly go here into the output folder previously we were not having any file but now we can see this file so we are successfully able to copy the file from external azure blob storage now let me try to read the data from this file whether we are successfully able to copy the file or not so for that we can use the spark dot read dot option i'm going to use the option because the file which is having the header so we have to mark this header as true after that here we can supply as csv and we can paste this so this is we are reading from the input location so let me try to execute so it should be having five records i guess so the display is not correct let me correct with the display now it's running and we should be able to see the output so as we can see it is having five records with all these values and let me quickly see in the output location that we have copied the file that should be having with the same number of records and same data so we can execute and we can check so as we can see it is also having the same data now the last thing on this video i want to discuss how we can delete this mount point we have successfully able to create it but how we can delete it so for deleting the mount point we can simply use the dbutils.fs dot help let me try to execute this and we'll see how many commands are there so under the mount we can see unmount so let me try to copy this unmount so by using this unmount we can delete this mount point so let me try to execute this as well this is executing yeah here we can see it is going to delete a dbfs mount point once this method returns the mount point metadata is guaranteed to be deleted so as we can see in the downside it is asking only one parameter and that parameter will be your directory directory means your mount point name so let me try to delete so let me go and gbutils dot fs dot unmount and under that we can simply supply as mount of input let me try to execute it so once it will be executed your mount point should be deleted so here as we can see this mount point is unmounted it means it's got deleted if you want to read again we should not be able to read it because this is not available now as we can see this path does not exist because we have not able to access this input location so this is all about this video thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video please subscribe our channel to get many more videos see you in the next video